Believe it or not, around a decade ago, many would argue that the best player in the world was indeed no other than Wesley Snyder. Although his prime didn't last long, it was one of the most magnificent runs we've ever seen from a midfielder. And unfortunately, even I have to admit that he doesn't get enough recognition for that time. But just recently, Snyder has claimed that if he wanted to, he could have been on the same level as Ronaldo and Messi. Hey guys, it's Raymar, and today, we're gonna look at these claims and see if they actually hold any merit. But before we start, I just wanna say thanks to my patrons on Patreon for making this video possible. And with that, let's get started. So in order to make a fair assessment of Snyder's claims, we're going to look at his career up to his prime. And we'll begin in 2002 where an 18 year old Wesley Snyder would begin his career playing for the most iconic club in his country, Ajax. His club and country have been all he's really known for the most part of his entire youth career as he stayed with the very same club since he was 7 years old in 1991. By all accounts, Snyder was never really your breakthrough generational talent that was recognized throughout his whole childhood, like Neymar for example, but instead had to be put on trial to even stay with the club for as long as he did, constantly making the cut until he would be given the opportunity to play in the men's team. But instead of being the go-to young prodigy of the club, Snyder would have to wait his turn. And for Snyder, this came in the form of an injury-filled Ajax squad who simply needed someone to fill the role of a starter who couldn't play. For him, it was the only opportunity he would need to really push his career forward. He would eventually be relied on enough to actually make his first start during no other than a Champions League quarterfinal match against AC Milan. Snyder, in his second professional season, would be critical in helping Ajax win the 2003-2004 Eredivisie season scoring 10 goals and providing 11 assists and 35 appearances. Not so bad for a 19 year old kid who was never really seen as a standout for the Ajax youth team. This season would see him winning the Johan Cruyff award for the best young player in the Netherlands. And throughout his time at Ajax, Snyder would continuously improve his skills throughout the years in the Netherlands, with his best being in the 2006-2007 season with 22 goals and 10 assists and 42 appearances, which has been the best goal scoring season yet, scoring much more than the previous 2005-2006 season with almost half as many more goals. At 22 years old, Snyder became the perfect attacking midfielder to add to your offense. He could find goals and score when given the opportunity while also having great passing and vision to make clinical assists and smart plays. In 2007, Real Madrid had their eyes dead set on Wesley Snyder, and if you recall, especially at that time, they were more than ready to spend as much money as possible to acquire as many superstars as they could. They would end up signing Snyder for a 27 million euro transfer fee, which at the time was the second most expensive Dutch player in history. Snyder was seen as one of those pivotal young stars that seemingly had unlimited potential. On his first match for Real Madrid, which just happened to be the Madrid Derby against Atletico Madrid, he would win the hearts of fans as he scored a last minute game winning goal to secure the win. His future at Madrid seemed very bright, but however, that didn't last very long. Although they did end up winning the league title in Snyder's first season in Madrid, his personal performance had declined from his previous year with Ajax. It was still a good season for him with 9 goals. 9 assists and 38 appearances, but it's understandable seeing as the club was full of superstars, who each wanted as much share of the ball as they could get, like Raul, Robin, Guti, and Van Nistelrooy. His second season with Madrid, however, wasn't too good at all. He began his season with a minor injury and had to sit out for a couple months, but when he got back on, he was in completely terrible form. Throughout the season, Snyder only managed to score 2 goals and provide 3 assists and 28 appearances. You might be thinking maybe the injury had caused him to be out of it for that season, but the truth is it was just a minor injury and there were other things that distracted him and began to change his career slowly. Snyder explains himself that when he got to Madrid, he was completely sucked into the party scene and nightlife of the city. He kind of got into an alcohol and clubbing addiction as a young 22 year old star entering the city, enjoying the success he had in his first season and all the attention he was getting from the media and the people. But it quickly became too much as he said he was drunk on the streets, rolling around and spending thousands of euros on drinks in every place he went to. And usually it was covered up by the club and not widely reported on at the time, so not too many people had known about it. Snyder says the rock and roll lifestyle of being in Madrid was just too tempting as a young man. He also claimed that there was always a teammate from the club with him partying and Usually, it was no other than the subject of my last video, party animal himself, Goody Hernandez. It got so bad that his former wife, Ramona Streekstra, ended up filing for divorce, which only made his alcoholism even worse. 
His fellow teammates and countrymen, Aryan Robin and Ruud van Nistelrooy, would often scold him, telling him to keep up his discipline and try to help him behave more professionally during his time at Real Madrid, which I thought was pretty cool, and shows you that they were not only good teammates, but caring people as well. Snyder also says the only reason he had any real playing time was because of his football intelligence. His physical condition was down the drain. Real Madrid bought Snyder for around 27 million euros, but because of his bad form, could only get rid of him for 15 million euros, purchased by no other than Inter Milan. In Milan, Snyder began to make a resurgence in both his personal discipline and dedication to football, as he would go on to improve his numbers with 8 goals and 15 assists in 41 appearances. His play, however, went beyond stats, as his skill in controlling the pace of the offense became much better. He even got better at taking free kicks, as two of those goals came from free kicks within the same match. He earned the nickname the Sniper because of his long ball passing accuracy and ability to score from absolutely insane distances. Incredibly, Inter would go on to win the insane treble by winning the Italian League, Italian Cup, and the UEFA Champions League. Just a season ago, Snyder hit rock bottom, but a lot of things can change within a year. Snyder was on top of the world, voted as the best midfielder of the 2009-2010 season, and also managing to lead the Champions League in number of assists as well, showing his brilliance on the big stage. Now came the 2010 World Cup, where Snyder played a huge role in leading his country of the Netherlands into the final being named the man of the match twice within the group stages and scoring some absolutely amazing goals. He would end up scoring five and equaling the leaders of the tournament like David Villa and Diego Forlan. He was even named the man of the match during the semi-final of the World Cup. And although they did go on to lose to Spain, football fans around the world absolutely noticed the brilliance of Snyder in 2010, carrying his country and winning the treble with his club. He would finish 4th place in Ballon d'Or voting, which to many people seemed like absolute robbery, as he had one of the most amazing performances of that year, and certainly of his career. I think this part of Snyder's career was truly underrated as he was incredibly amazing to watch. But after seeing such success, Snyder would never have another season as good as this. His numbers in Inter Milan went down every year after that, winning less and less silverware along the way. Snyder would say that after this season, he would go on to his old drinking habits once again, and just didn't work as hard, saying that he wanted to enjoy his life, and didn't want to make as many sacrifices as Ronaldo or Messi to stay on top. Maybe his loss in the World Cup final and potential robbery in the Ballon d'Or was just too much for him to handle. Instead of challenging himself to continue to play for big name clubs and top leagues, he would choose to stay at Galatasaray. No offense to any supporters, you guys are a great club, but the Super League isn't really considered as one of the best, if we're going to be completely honest. Snyder could have played in the Premier League after his time at Inter Milan, as Man United was extremely interested in him. But like I said, it's like his passion and dedication just ended after his two years in Milan. During his time at Galatasaray, he would go on to score a total of 45 goals and 44 assists in 175 appearances for the club, spanning a total of 5 seasons where he would become a Super League legend. Snyder was still a great player, but definitely not as good as he could have been if he had kept trying harder and pushing himself. He would go on to win two league trophies with the club and a total of three local cups and three local super cups. After that, he would play a single season for Nice in Ligue 1 and play a couple seasons in the Qatar League before eventually retiring. Snyder was, however, absolutely phenomenal for his country, being the youngest capped player in his country's history, while simultaneously being the country's most capped player of of all time. In the 2004 Euros, as young as he was at the age of 22, he helped lead his country to the semi-final before unfortunately losing, was relied on to start every match of the 2006 World Cup, and finally started showing flashes of his potential greatness in the 2008 Euros, where he was included in the team of the tournament for his performance, led the European Championship in number of assists, and was even voted as having the best goal of the 2008 European tournament. He was also pivotal in the 2010 and 2014 World Cup where his country finished as the runner-ups and third place respectively. Now, in my opinion, Wesley Snyder could have been one of the best attacking midfielders we have ever seen. But because of his lack of discipline and alcoholism, he never reached his full potential, as evident in the insanely quick weight gain he experienced shortly after retiring. 
After all, in his best season, the man was only 26 years old, and if he wanted to, could have kept it up for at least a few more years. Personally, I think his claim that he could have been as good as Ronaldo or Messi is kind of outrageous, especially knowing that it was his choice to stop working so hard. Those two are in a league of their own and work hard more than any other player to stay that way. Snyder essentially stopped trying to be as good of a player as he showed. And don't get me wrong, he was indeed an amazing player. But as with so many other legends, work ethic and dedication separates those who are good from those who are great. But that's all from me today, guys. This video was made possible by Alaric Aguilar, Owen Torres, Louie, and the rest of my patrons over at Patreon. If you guys want to support the channel, check my Patreon link in the description below. Any support is greatly appreciated. Anyways, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe and turn those notifications on if you haven't already to see the best football documentaries on YouTube. Thank you guys for all the support and I'll see you in the next one.